Hey, this is James at Eastside MMA, and I'm going to be taking a look at some sparring with my uh, longtime friend Bailey. Things start off pretty quick here. Um, it almost gets me there, I barely slip it. Um, every good flush hit, I'll be slow motioning, so you'll be able to see some of the better counters of the match. And like right here, yeah, I, I, he baits me with that one two, and then he comes back with a good counter cross. And that one was, was pretty good. But he, he, it was a glancing blow, and then I get one to the body, and then I miss. So the, 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 this first three, four minutes starts off really well. A lot of almost hits, kind of, you know, some of these two are, 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 are glancing blows, but I, I tried to keep the slow motion to just the best punches. Like there, I got, I knew I got him good with that uppercut, but the cross wasn't as good. Um. And that, that, that's why hard sparring has a place, like, because we're going pretty much as, as, with as much speed and intensity as we can. Um, and you figure out pretty quickly that not all punches are created equal. So, like, some things might land, but then they, they, they didn't really hit hard, you know, so. And when you really look at the, the, the number of punches that actually hit with full force, um, you'll inevitably kind of bring it down to about maybe a dozen different moments. And everything else being more or less like clatter. Um, even if you are trying to just really rip someone's head off, you know, there's very few instances where you get the chance. And that's the important part of this whole hard sparring exercise is to find those clean moments where it was like, yeah, that was a good one, you know. Um, and he even acknowledged that one. He's like, yeah, nice. And that's why it's important to hard spar with people that 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 aren't worried about the ego of it. You know, they're not worried about that resentment of, oh, you got me, I'm going to get you back so bad so I can mess you up. Um, and that was a good one. You know, that's why, you know, he has plenty of these good counters early on, and then he has more later, but he, he kind of has a dip in the middle um, where he's not pressuring me enough. And in order to counter this kind of off-kilter, weirdly timed karate style... You want to, um, oh yeah, I get the body shot and I slip that. And I think he, yeah, he gets me good there. So he has some good rebuttals, but what he really should be doing is, is, is getting rid of all this empty space, right? All this time spent moving around and doing, doing less stuff kind of helps me out stylistically. Um, and I see what his game plan is here. He's going for trying to maximize his range because he, you know, he knows he has longer range than me. And so he's trying to keep me outside, but sometimes, you know, even though he's got the reach on me, he should be throwing more combinations and putting more pressure because he can afford to throw more before I even get into range. It's just that he worries about the counters, right? And ironically, worrying about the counters makes you more susceptible to the counters. Um, and so, you know, and, and whenever you're watching a fight and wondering why some guy's just stuck in kicking range, getting kicked, and it's like, oh, well, why don't you just go in? It's because of that. It's because, ironically, the more you think about it, the more it, it, it affects you negatively. Um, but even through that, you know, he puts good pressure. He, he comes back with almost every, every time I get him, or if I don't get him, he's always swinging back. And, and that's a huge step in the right direction. You know, he definitely has reached a new threshold. And that's my kind of my favorite way to describe those kinds of... Oh, yeah, I get him with kind of a, a decent counter. But he also gets me a little bit there, too. Um, you know, because I try to explain it like you don't need to be better than me in order to beat me. You just have to reach a certain threshold. And once you reach a threshold, it doesn't really matter how good your opponent is. Oh yeah, he gets me really good. And he should be doing stuff like this, taking up more space, charging forward more, you know, and, and doubling up on those crosses. Um, but I don't see him do it do that too much more often, you know, whereas it's, it's really working out for him anytime he throws an extensive combination. Um, now where was I? Oh yeah, thresholds, right? So all he has to do is reach a certain point, and then you could beat me. Oh, yeah, I get him really bad there. Um, and, yeah, he, he, you know, 
head, uh, headgear or not, you know, a homie definitely takes a punch. Um, because headgear, contrary to what people think, headgear doesn't actually make you more resistant to punches. It just means that if you do get knocked out, your head's going to be sort of safe from cracking on the ground. You know, that's that's why I feel like we can kind of get away with going at this intensity level on the concrete. And yeah, that lead straight was nasty. I It doesn't look like much, but his reaction says it all, and I definitely felt the dig from that punch. Even more so than I really intended to give out. Nice little fakes and, and whatnot. Um, but in any case, yeah, the headgear is is how we can afford to even do this right now, as far as I'm concerned, you know, safety and all that. But yeah, like, just, just to get that out of the way, yeah, headgear doesn't help you from getting knocked out. It just keeps you from getting cut on your face, and it keeps your head safe if you do fall on the ground and hit your head. But as far as, you know, resisting the concussion, I mean, you know, you just... Nothing's better than just not blindly charging in and getting hit super hard. Um, so yeah, as you can see, or he's just, he needs to pressure during his moments more, because he's giving me more space to make reads, more space to throw little shots like that. And then, yeah, I like that. There we go. A nice uppercut right there. Yeah, he just has to fill up the space more. He's letting me fill the space up with little whimsical stuff and little blah, you know. And right there, like, instead of throwing one-two, he should be throwing a one-two and then seeing how I react and then throwing even more. But he backs out and then he's waiting again. He's waiting. And the more he waits, the better it sort of plays for me because I can gauge him better and then get these little shots and then escape free. You know, he gave me a free little shot to the body. It wasn't much, but when that's the only thing there, that's, you know... I'm walking away with a free shot to the body. Not really good enough to slow-mo, but, you know, you, you see what I'm saying. And he just hesitates. Yeah, there, there, there should have been way more combinations there. And they're like, right there, boom, he gets that one, two. And he comes in for more. I throw, he slips, I slip. And then I slip again. So yeah, that was better for him. He landed a 1-2, and I only got... I don't think I got anything from there. Oh, and then a slip-slip. And then, yeah, he gets me here. Or no, do I get him with a body? And I think we both get each other there. I just felt like that combination was such a... That exchange was so good that I felt like slowing down the whole thing. And so yeah, I think he won that exchange 2-1 to one there. And that's exactly what I mean. That's why I slowed that whole thing down, is because... He needs to be doing a lot more of that. A lot more extended combinations and and a lot less of that. But I think that actually didn't hit very hard. Or I think that's why I didn't slow motion it. It's actually, uh, I slow mode it and then, yeah, he slips that ever so slightly. Um, but yeah, when you slip back, if, you, if you're slipping, you want to try to counter at least or think about countering. But then I do the same thing, you know, I slip a bunch and then I don't do anything, which is a huge mistake. That is, you know, don't, like, don't, don't take that for showing off, because that's actually a big mistake. I shouldn't really be busting a slip and then not punishing him for, for whiffing the punch. And also, too, when, when, when he jumps to the side, like, I want to see a lot more, like, because there's these moments where when he backs off, it's like he's not fighting, right? And you kind of always want to be thinking, fighting, fighting, fighting. You don't want to have these moments. Oh, yeah, I get him with the good counter punch. It, it's a good punch to the body, but, you you know, you need to be ready with an escape plan. Even if you are confident in your reach. Because the reach difference isn't super pronounced, but it is enough. Like, I do notice it sometimes, you know? Like, right there, like, I feel like if he was a sh smaller guy, like... Like, my range would be finding him a lot better. But I know I'm on the end of his range. And so I'm trying to wait for him to lean in just that little bit so I can counterpunch. So that's where his patience is good. His patience is good. But then right there, he takes too long to react, right? And even though that slow motion is actually happening super fast, you can see where it's like, yeah, he needs to be uh, putting out more offense. 
so that I don't get away with those little, yeah, nice jab. He lunges in real good. And that, that's where that reach, that reach, dude. You know, he's got a good lunge on that reach. I like those exchanges. But once again, his exchanges feel so defensively orientated that, you know, you want to be a little more aggressive so that I don't get my little time to, to do my stuff and see what you want to do and make predictions. Because that's ultimately what I'm trying to do. Like, my, my number one game plan is make a read and get the one good shot that finishes everything. I like that, yeah. He gets me leaning back. Gets my head into a nice location and gets me... It was a little low. He kind of clipped my chest more. But I like the idea. Like, that was a good one. Just a little higher on the jawline would be preferable. Yeah, Rain's catching on the microphone a little bit. Um, yeah, and this exchange is just, you know... Not every exchange has to be brutal, and so I like the way he's playing this out, trying to read every... trying to make these reads and then go in with an intelligent game plan. But, yeah, just, just for future reference, my game plan, you know, more output. I like that a lot. And yeah, that's a good one there. We kind of both get each other. We both corkscrew our punches around each other. <laughs> And right there, like, if he did a nice third punch right there on that combo. And then, yeah, right there, I got him good with that one. And then that, that, that body shot wasn't as good. Um, but right there, like, if he, didn't, if he didn't react to me moving in and just continued his combination, that would have been way more preferable. And so sometimes reacting in the middle is like a really bad idea. Sometimes it can really work. Like if you were going to throw a big combo and you just, you change your mind. I, I've seen it work and I've seen it not work. So, so in that case, like sometimes those defensive reactions can actually be the reason why you're getting hit. And that's my mistake too. Like, and I'll, I'll get some footage of me training with uh, the MMA guys at Team Puna. And you'll see a lot of that where my little fast twitch reactions actually backfire and the fact that they're committing to their combo or committing to their attack actually makes is why they're winning. You know, even if I am getting the counter as well, like they'll just they'll just steamroll through my counter. Uh, partly because I need to learn to take the safety off. You know, I'm a little too I'm a little too nice and I'm a little too soft. But it's kind of hard with training partners. Like even though we're hard sparring and I'm sparring with Bailey and he's been doing this with me for years. I still just don't feel comfortable giving him a real nasty 100% one because I don't like injuring training partners, right? And and sometimes that can bite me in the butt and I'll treat someone too softly and they won't be treating me as softly and I'll get blasted. Which is once again why I'm doing this hard sparring is I need to learn to let go of trying to hold on to so much control and trying to let it get out there, you know, because sometimes it's unsafe to be too controlled and like this one this one is like evident like as bad as it is and as much as that was a great counter like i really didn't put very much on that because i'm just i don't want to knock people out you know unless unless that's the the goal right and for sparring the goal is not really to knock anyone out the goal is to help him learn but also show like enough realism where it's like yeah we're not playing games you know i'm not and that was a good one. It was a glancing blow, but he kind of threw his arms out in such a way that it kind of knocked my punch away. So I kind of liked that. I did want to include that. I don't know if he was intending to do that. But I did like the effect that that sort of elliptical angle on his punch had. And then, he, oh yeah, he gets me back for that counter I had. He gets me back for that earlier one. Almost the exact opposite. Like, he threw a big overhand and I got him with a lead straight. And then I throw a big overhand and he gets me with a lead straight. Follows it up with a nice jab. Really good stuff. And great combo. Um, a lot of it, when I slow-moed it back, was all glancing. Like, he was landing with, like, the side of his wrist and kind of weird spots on his arm. So, that's another thing to focus on. Make sure to land with those primary knuckles. You know, it can be hard to do in the chaos when you're just throwing combos in the pocket. 
But a lot of those were sort of funny where it's like the side of his fingers and the side of his wrist all hitting in a way that doesn't really hurt or it doesn't really generate enough impact. But as far as landing a combo, I did like that combination for the most part. And then here I slip, I get him with that little overhand. He does roll, he does roll away from it really well though. Um, so that is a good example of like, I did throw a good counter, but then his reaction was also really good. And even though I clipped him, I mean, I, there was almost no power. There couldn't have been no power in that. You know, that roll, that, that slip was, was pretty decent. You know, that barely grazed him. And he's trying to show, I, I like the way he's trying to do it. He's trying to show like two different hands out, trying to see which one I focus on. So you, you can see he's starting to get the strategy. He's starting to figure it out. But his punches are too slow right now. It seems like maybe he's getting tired. I don't know. But that would work if it was quicker. And then I slip. Oh, I like this. Yeah, he does this really well. So I slip when nothing's happening, and he delays the punch and lands a nice counter there. And then I return, and then I land a nice off-time jab, which gets me into a whole thought about broken rhythm. And... Sometimes people don't understand what I'm doing. They're like, oh, you got to throw your combinations with more rhythm. And it's like, no, I'm throwing them arrhythmically on purpose because you can trick guys into walking into stuff like that. They think they know the timing and then you throw things with an odd timing. And like that, I like the way he threw that overhand. He, he got it right around my forearm. And then right there, I try to block. He sneaks that in and a nice sneaky jab. So he really turns it on in the end here. He really gets good here. But then I follow up. Oh, he kind of catches me there. I slip it. And he gets me there. So yeah, his, this, this, final, this final minute or two, he really is able to come into his own. But then I get him. Nice little body jab. And to the face. And that's where, you know... You can see the flip side. Oh, I like that. I like that, though. The aggression. He gets that get back. So right there, it's just plain old bad luck, right? So when he is committing to the combination, that's backfiring. And then when he is trying to defend halfway through the combination, that also backfires. So once again, context. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching the video and uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you like it. I'll, I'm trying to do more content once I figure out how to get more production value. Um, anyway, have a good day, night, whatever it is. I'll see you later.